Okay. Social media. Bulldog Sunday. So we're walking dogs today. Come on, man. That's what we're doing. We are walking dogs today. Go, 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 go. There must be a dog in there. Stop eating that grass, man. Yeah, boon on Sunday, so we walking dogs. That there is Give Money Kennel, truly the Jizer. I say Give Money Kennels because Give Money Kennels gave me his damn. But the deal is they control the breed. So while I own this damn, I owned her when they bred her. It was their breeding. It was their decision. It was their uh, it was their choice on who they bred her to and whatnot. So I labeled him Give Money. It was their breeding. You know what I mean? It was my bitch, but it was their breeding. Come on. And the, the next time she get bred, it'll be their breed. I just get a pup every time we breed her. And I'm, I'm okay with that because uh, that's the deal I made, man. I'm not one of them cats that's going to make a deal. And then sometime later, oh, it don't sound sweet to me no more. So I feel like I'm getting ganked. No. I knew what the deal was when I made it. I knew that... You know, I was getting more of the short end of the stick, but I was willing to accept it because I wanted her and I wanted to continue to get offspring from her. And that's how I got truly. Truly is a triple bred yellow man dog on top, blended with some more Patrick stuff and a small Jeep out. And then on bottom, it's uh, Bishop, international champ, well, grand champion yellow man on top, triple bread, grand champion yellow man on top, blended with some other Patrick stuff, with some more Patrick stuff. Then on bottom, it's uh, international champion Bishop, blended with some Patrick stuff, and there's one yellow man dog in there too. But what they did is they took Bishop and bred him to a, a really good Patrick bitch. Then they took that dog and bred it to an offspring of Little Yellow Man. Something like that. I would have to look at the pair, but it, it's something like that. He's a, he's a hell of a dog. He's a real solid bulldog. He's a little fat right now. All my dogs are. They ain't been getting the work they deserve. I ain't been giving them the, the work they need. Short changing them. I do that when I have puppies, man. When I got pups on my yard, they take so much of my time that my adult dogs get short changed. Listen, dude, stop eating that grass, bro. I'm not of the belief that eating grass settles their stomach or whatever. No, it, it don't digest. Anything that's hard to digest is not good for you. I just had to pull some grass out of his ass. But we walking dogs today. I got my first American Pitbull Terrier. I think I was 19 years old, 18 or 19. Now, I had a mixed breed of a, a, a Pitbull and Shep when I was in the seventh grade. Now she was a real 50-50 dog. You know what I mean? He had a purebred Pitbull. He had a purebred German Shepherd. He did not breed them. He bred that Pitbull. I probably told the story before. He bred that Pitbull to another Pitbull. But that Shep got loose and got on there too. So he did have uh, some pups that looked like they were purebred. 
and his wife had accidentally gave us one of those. Well, she didn't actually get purposely gave us one of those. He wasn't having that. When he got off work, he came and got that motherfucker. Because if we was getting it for free, he like, nah, that, that's for sale. Which it shouldn't have been. They should have all been for free considering he didn't know which was which. You know? He could have sold somebody a pretty ass mutt. But with all that being said, that dog was a beast, man. I love that dog. Her name was Ginger. She was a Brindle. Her ears stood straight up. She was tall. She was probably a little taller than him. But she was, man, that dog was hard. Her fur was tight to her body. She didn't have no long ass fur. She was a really good looking dog. She looked mixed though. Her, her muzzle was a little long. So she did look mixed. I used to put her on all kind of shit. All kind of shit. I never truly tested her. I was, a, I was only in junior high school. And I never put her on, you know, I put her on Rottweilers and shit. But it was some older cats had some game dogs. But, you know, I was, I was more scared of their knowledge than I was of their dog. So I never did it. But they told me, you know, if you really want to see what she's about. They used to call her the dingo dog. Whenever I see them, they used to be like, she look like a dingo, a brindo dingo. She ain't look like no damn dingo though. And then, like I said, the first time I got a, a true American Pitbull Terrier, I got it from my homeboy, KL. Her name was Drama. I named her Drama. D-R-A-M-A. -A, drama. And why'd I do that? Because she ended up seeing a lot of drama in her lifetime. I'm talking about the bitch was ran over by a car. The pig shot her. She caught mastitis. Come on. She was game to the core. Super smart. She was a real dog, man. A real dog. Super smart. Human smart. Then the first time I ever, you know, stepped out of my comfort zone and bought a dog from an established breeder, you know, spend some real money on a dog. I went to Pat Patrick's. And we went and bought two. What's up, bro? We went and bought two very fine animals. Mudiwa and Miss Bolio. Now, their registered name was Patrick's Texas and Patrick's Blossom. But my brother called his bitch Miss Bolio. I called my dog Mudiwa. M-U-D-I-W-A, Mudiwa. Diwa, for short. Them were some great dogs. We flew out there. Well, we flew to Vegas. My sister got us a rental car because neither one of us had license. We drove from uh, Vegas to Arizona. I can't remember what part of Arizona it was in. It was probably a couple hour drive. So we, we flew to Vegas to Arizona. I mean, we drove from Vegas to Arizona. It stormed on us and everything. That's the first time I ever seen a coyote. I was in Arizona. And that was the first time I ever seen a shit like, uh, like it was storming in the mountains. And all it was all dry around us, but you could see like thunder and shit from the mountains. But you know how it is in Arizona, it's all dry and shit. But then there was a stream coming from the mountains, from way in the mountains, crossing the road. Just a stream of water. Just rainwater. It wasn't like no creek or nothing like that because it was going right across the road. But it was coming from up in the mountain. You know, that was the type of shit I only seen on uh, on National Geographic and the Discovery Channel and shit. I watch that kind of shit. You know, I sit down with a blunt and I watch all that shit. I like all that shit. So that, I was super amazed by it. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't raining around us. And that's what, 
that's what the coyote was doing. It was drinking out of that stream. And we slowed down and looked at it, looked up at us. On our way home, it was storming. So they tried to tell us because it was storming. She's like, well, it's storming here. Can y'all just, uh, and you just, you need to, just, she's like, uh, Emily. Emily was hard to deal with. Pat wasn't just easy, but Emily was flat out hard to deal with. So she like, y'all need to get you a hotel room and come pick your dog up in the morning. I'm like, that That can't work. We fly out in the morning. We already had a ticket. We had to hurry up. So boom. On our way home, so we go there. They give us a pat towards the yard with us. They take us around the whole yard, show us this whole yard. So we got to see Slayton, we got to see Itchy, we got to see Trick. Because one of the dogs was off of Slayton and Trick. My dog was off of Slayton and Trick. No, my dog was off of Slayton and Itchy. My brother's dog was off of Slayton and Trick. Of course, you know, we raised them, put them together. They had some really good dogs. And then I went back out there and bought a dog named Candy Girl. I think she was off of Patrick Ramsey. I got a, she was either off of Ramsey or Cad. One of the two, Patrick Ramsey or Patrick's cat. I gotta look at the paperwork. I, yeah. We lost uh, Dewa in a kennel accident. We lost Miss Bolio. She needed have, She needed help giving birth. And somehow, I had totally, we bred her once. Boom, had some great, great pups. And then we bred her again. We bred them again, same, you know, same two. Put them back together. The second time she was at my house, it was New Year's Eve. Me being young and fast, in a hurry, you know what I mean? I wanted to run the streets, so I'm telling her, bitch, hurry up and had them puppies, man. You know what I mean? And I left. I come home, she still only had like two pups. Now, that should have raised my alarms. You know, I should have realized something ain't right. But the problem was, she had a problem pushing out the first litter. My brother's wife helped pull them out. Somehow, that I totally forgot about that. And they must have totally forgot about it, too. It was my fault. So I'm not saying that I'm blaming them, too. It was my what? fault. Because I totally forgot. But they must have totally forgot, too, because we had dinner together that night. And, of course, I told them, you know, Miss Bolio was at home having them puppies. But, yep, I came. I woke up the next morning, man. She was dead. A puppy hanging out of her twat. That hurt me. That hurt me to this day. To this day, that bothers me, man, because that was my thought, man. That was my negligence. That was my, that was me not paying enough attention. And that's probably why I pay so much attention to my dogs now. That's why I, you know, I spend so much time with them and I'm really focused on making sure they, they live a, a healthy, productive life. <laughs>